Hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Debbie. I am the She in Sheality TV and wow, it's been like <laughs> two months since I did my last video. I took a break that was only supposed to be like a week, but it stretched out to be like <sighs> the full two months. Holy moly. Um, I have to say though, this break was longer than anticipated because there wasn't anything reality TV related that I actually wanted to talk about. And truthfully speaking, I stopped watching just about all reality TV for the two months that I wasn't making videos. I just didn't feel like there was anything on that I even wanted to watch, let alone talk about on video. Anyway, the itch to make videos is back and I want to talk about 90 Day Fiance The Other Way Season 4, which started airing, I think, probably three weeks ago. I have it on Discovery+. Plus. Specifically, I want to talk about Danielle and Johan because they're not new characters. We've met them before. You might remember them from 90 Day Love in Paradise. If not, quick recap. Danielle lives in New York City and Johan lives in the Dominican Republic. So these two met while she was on vacay in the DR and he was a fitness instructor, naturally, or some such thing, at the hotel where she was staying. They met, sparks flew, and long story short, they got married. Good so far? Cool. So now you're up to date. So now, in this, this first episode of the fourth season, Johan wants to live in New York because he's a card-carrying believer in the American dream, and he feels like he wants to move there, get a job, make tons of money that, so that he can help support his family back in the DR. And he's never been covert about that. It's been his thing since day one, since the day they met. He's been vocal about the fact that he wants to move to the U.S. so he can help support his family. But Danielle, who lives in New York, is tired of the hurry up and spend mentality of the big city. And in this first episode, she goes to a coffee shop and gets a large matcha latte that looks more like a small for $11, like more than $11 she paid for this thing. Anyways, so she wants to live in the DR for its slower pace and less expensive style of living, right? This is something that Johan is not into. He does not want to stay in the DR. But while they dated, she did tell him that she doesn't want to live in New York, but he didn't want to hear it, right? So she was vocal about the fact that she doesn't want to live in New York. He was vocal about the fact that he doesn't want to live in the DR, right? So she wasn't dishonest about what she wanted. But while they were dating, she kind of relaxed her position for the sake of keeping the peace, okay? So it kind of lulled him into thinking, you know what, she'll be okay with going back to New York. Like, you know, she doesn't want to stay in the DR. But every time she went to the DR to visit her now husband, she really didn't look forward to going back to the U.S. And not just because she would miss him. She so badly wanted to start living her own dream of eating mangoes and giving yoga classes on the beach in the DR, right? Johan, on the other hand, feels the same way about living in the DR as Danielle feels about living in New York. He doesn't feel like there's any opportunity there. He's lived there his whole life, and he's tired of the struggle to actually make a life, not just a living. So, if you ask me, both of these people are deluded about the exact same thing. The truth of this relationship is, neither wants to live where they currently do, and it looks like they're using each other as a way out. Right? Does that make sense? Here's the twist, though. First, Danielle does make a deal. Danielle and Johan make a deal that they'll live in the DR only for one year because they figure that's how long it will take for his papers to be approved to move to the U.S., right? So in this episode, Danielle tells her friends that she's moving to the DR, and she also reveals that she hasn't even filed the papers for Johan to move to the U.S., right? So her friends ask if he knows this, and she says, well, he doesn't not know it admitting that she hasn't told him that she filed the papers the same way she hasn't told him that she has filed them. So the question is, why hasn't he asked her, right? Because she says he hasn't asked. I'm wondering why he hasn't thought to ask her. Maybe he doesn't want to come off as being one of those guys who, uh, you know, latches on to an American woman so that they can get married and move to the U.S., maybe, or... I don't know. I can't imagine why he wouldn't ask whether or not she's filed the papers yet. Anyway, Danielle makes a trip to the DR to start setting up her life with her new husband, wanting to start looking for an apartment and stuff like that. And in one scene, they're driving 
And she's trying to tell him that life in the U.S. is expensive or life in New York, where she lives, is expensive and that she pays $4,000 a month for her apartment. Like, that's just her rent, right? No food, no, like, hydro, no, like, nothing else. That's just what she pays to live in the apartment. But when she's telling him that, all I'm thinking is, why would you tell him this? All he probably hears is or thinks is, so she's got at least $4,000 a month to spend right? He don't care how much it costs. He's like, at least you can afford it, right? You know that he's not making that kind of money or he wouldn't be wanting to leave his country for a quote unquote better life in the U.S. so badly, right? So she tells him that the American dream doesn't exist. It's a fallacy, but he doesn't believe her because he says he knows people who have left the DR, moved to the U.S. and made something out of nothing, right? So now he thinks that she wasn't honest with him about where she wanted to live after they were married because now she's actually putting her foot down about not moving back to the U.S. with him, right? So to me, guys, I don't know that it feels dishonest, but I, I we got to remember that she did say she didn't want to live in New York, right? She relaxed her position to keep the peace, which is the exa- exactly what he did about living in the DR. He kind of relaxed his position because he just didn't want to fight about it. So in this episode, she says, like to the camera, she's like, he can't move there without me and I don't want to move. So I don't know about you guys, but that's some super villain type shit right there. Like she didn't file the papers. She's not planning on filing the papers, but she didn't tell him that. I feel like both of these people thought that once they were married, they would push harder to get their way regarding where they'd be living. And now that they are married, it's turning into a much bigger issue. So at the end of this episode, Danielle spends time with Johan's family, all 16 of them, and tells them that she wants to stay in the DR long term. There's no real reaction from the family, but I think Johan was all proud that he was getting out or he thought he was getting out. And now she's crushed that dream. Like I said before, there are 16 people in his family and he names them all off, you know, mom, dad, auntie, uncle, sister, nieces, nephews, whatever. And he wants to make money to support those people. So now Danielle and Johan have made a new deal. They'll live in the DR and if things are going well, he'll relax on his position to move to the US. If things are not going well, they'll talk again about moving. But I think that regardless, he doesn't want to stay in the DR. And he still hasn't asked her about whether or not he's filed his those papers. Like right up to the end of the episode, he hasn't asked her. Right. And I'm into the second episode now and he still hasn't asked. I don't know if he asked by the end of the second episode, but we'll see. So I feel like as long as he doesn't actually ask her, she's not going to actually tell him because he'll probably blow up. I would. I mean, who could blame him? Anywho, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Again, and as usual, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, I will not make it two months this time. I'm actually planning my next video for, I'll probably upload it Tuesday, but we'll see. Yeah, probably early this week. Um, Anyways, I will see you next time.